Listen, the hate speech laws. Now, this is really uh, disturbing in the sense that in, a, in New Zealand at the moment, you, you, there's been a big push to be more inclusive of the Maori, of the Maori language, the so-called iwi, the different tribes. Uh, there's a lot of new language coming in. I'm going to show you this poster. Here's a poster for a pop group which was sent to me called 6060, 660 or whatever. But uh, you can't see it closely, but I'll, I'll just take it down, but just show you briefly. It's all in Maori. There's not a word of English anywhere in there. Now, if you uh, listen to, um, you know, your various uh, TV shows, uh, Jacinda Ardern addressing even the United Nations, there's a lot of Maori coming in. How, surely there are plenty of people, I would say a large pr proportion of people in New Zealand don't actually speak Maori. How are they responding to this push to make this almost the national language? Of course. And and look, uh, from the outset, I'll say uh, Maori, or uh, we call here te reo, is a national language. That is already the case, and it has been for many years. And so on one level, uh, I think it is appropriate that for those who want to engage in this, those who have the capacity or, or the interest to learn, uh, should be able to express themselves with sure, their free speech rights. But they're making it compulsory, aren't they? But 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 this is you know you've talked about this a lot in the past as well, Ron. We when you control the language, whether that be a specific language used or just the words we're able to use, you're able to control the arguments. And uh, it, it, it's very difficult for people who are uh, opposing the coerced use of certain language, whether you know te reo or or the plain language officers are jumping in on it. If, if we can't actually come to the table with the way we want to express ourselves, then free speech is is a, a farce, really. And so that's where we come at it. I think there's an element where people can be proud of the, the heritage that we have in Te Reo. And we, you know, for those who uh, know it or have learned it, own that. But to try and lay that on other people, and, and really this is where we get into it, you're a bad person if you don't uh, speak in this way, say these words, uh, you know, use this terminology. We worked on uh, the local government elections, which we recently had here, and uh, one of the uh, Human Rights Commission's uh, communications to all candidates was that they should be using these very particular sets of, of words and, and shouldn't be engaging with people who don't use them and then should be refusing to accept the comments of certain people who, who, who don't do it in the particular particular way that we're told we have to do it now. And, and this is how speech becomes coerced. Uh, and again, uh, all well, as you'll imagine, is, is, a, is a bit of a folk hero for, for those at the Free Speech Union, but we look at the way he constructed this idea that uh, at a certain level, if, if we're not allowed to use different languages, we can't come up with different ways of thinking. We can't come Absolutely. up with ideas. 100%. Uh, Jonathan, we've got to go, but another time I'd like to chat to you about these insane methane uh, laws that the New Zealand's farmers are now going to be taxed the bejesus out of, and you'll see basically the, the guts being ripped out of New Zealand's great farming industry. I cannot believe what is happening there. Anyway, Jonathan, great to chat to you, and we'll chat again soon.